guys, my next guest I had the pleasure of working with on my very first feature film. She not only acts, but has co-written a book, produced a film, and has a podcast with her sister. She's been on your screens for over a decade and is only 19 years old. Ladies and gentlemen, my friend Bailey Madison. I'm gonna cry. That's the sweet. That's like the sweetest introduction I've ever gotten, and it like means a lot because you're like my little bro. So this is like so special. Okay. I'm more nervous about this interview than I've ever been. Just that's, so you know. That's. I hope I don't let you down. I. You won't trust me. Oh, I could. Um, okay. So I how could. did you get yeah. into the acting business? Um. So my mom, who you know, and my sister Katie, uh, they did commercials and, and movies a bunch, and then. Um, when I was younger, I used to just kind of follow them around to New York, and I remember like just loving Broadway shows and just being like so enraptured and in the musical world of it all. Um, and then when I was four, I went to Orlando with my sister, so she auditioned for a movie called Lonely Hearts, and um, I found myself in the waiting room when she came out. They were like, "Does your little sister act? We have like a role for her age." They were like, "I don't know." They're like, "Do you want to try?" And I was like, "Yeah." And so um, I booked that movie, went on to do a film called Bridge Terabithia uh, in New Zealand for six months, went back home for like a year, came out to LA when I was seven for press, and it's just been like such a blessing ever since. But there was never like a, oh my God, I want to do this moment. It just sort of happened, and I'm so grateful for it. Okay. That's, uh, that's, not, that's probably the most extreme and well-memorized. Uh, uh, <laughs> I've, I've had to tell the story for a it's, long time. It, yeah, it was just... Most people, it's like, oh yeah, I went and I did this and did this, but you knew the name of everything. And yeah, it was I just... remember like it was yesterday. Wow. Like I literally like I remember they cast it out of a hotel in Orlando, and I remember what the what the hotel lobby looked like, and waiting for my mom, for my sister to come out, and the room, like the whole experience. I think just because it like meant a lot to me, it was the start of something. So I think I just kind of remembered it. Like, granted, I can't remember what I did yesterday, but I guess I remember that when I was four. <laughs> Also, if I have lipstick on my teeth, you have to let me know because I have no way of knowing. I'm trusting you on this. Okay. Um, you said you went to New Zealand to film something. Yeah. Is that the uh, most, uh, I guess you could say, interesting place you've been or have you gone other places that stand out? Uh, New Zealand actually holds a really dear place in my heart. I just, I love the people and I love the culture there. The Kiwis are like the best. Um, but I've been so fortunate that this job has like allowed me to experience so many different parts of the world. And uh, Australia was another one of my favorites. I spent about six months down there as well. Um, Hawaii was like a blast. I loved every second of that. Um, Atlanta, how great was Atlanta? That, that was that, <laughs> that was, was, fun. was the that most was extreme place I've <laughs> ever been. Um, but yeah, I think I think New Zealand probably holds. Um, like the most significant place in my heart just because for me like I I pinpoint bridge Terabithia is like the start of everything and um, Josh and Anna Sophia were just like so good to me that I'm I, f I feel like I learned a lot about my set etiquette and my life as an actor and just why I love this business through them so you said they have really nice kiwis there that's so it's a, yes. it's a very interesting uh, thing to remember so kiwis are like a big part of New Zealand but that's also what they call people from New Zealand so we call oh. them the kiwis okay and then the Aussies are the Australians so okay. like I'm like yeah the kiwis are the best because <laughs> them but I actually don't like the fruit kiwis so it, it could be very confusing if you don't clarify so and even then speaking of fruit yeah can you tell me a little bit I love that segue can, that can you tell me good Pineapple. <laughs> I love pineapple. So what is uh, Alex's lemonade stand? Uh, Alex's lemonade, that was a real good, that was really good. I just saw what Thank you did you. there. Um, Alex's <laughs> lemonade stand is uh, a foundation that I work with um, and their main goal is to help raise money for pediatric cancer research and I've started working with them. I started working with them when I was probably, I want to say 13 years old, but I've been aware of them for a really long time. And um, it was started by a little girl named Alex Scott who was diagnosed with uh, cancer a day before her uh, first birthday and at four years old she was like, I want to start a lemonade stand to try and raise money for kids with cancer and they were like, okay. And at eight she sadly lost her battle but she raised over a million dollars for pediatric research. Wow. So uh, her mom and dad, Liz and Jay Scott, have kept her dream going and um, you're able to hold lemonade stands no matter where you are and send in the money and there's also other ways to work out and um, work with them and so I, I just I love everything they stand for. I feel like every kid deserves to live a happy and healthy life and they do a really great job with trying to find that cure. This yeah, honestly, I think that's kind of crazy. I mean, a million dollars in uh, four, years. four years, and yeah. off of just lemonade stands out in of general. her, like out of her front yard. It's really cool. It just shows that I feel like there's kind of 
when you're a kid, you feel like, what can I do? Like, I'm a kid. Like, how, how can I do big things? Like, that's for adults to do. Am I capable of anything? And I think it just goes to show that, like, you're never too young to make a difference. And, um, you know, the children are really the future and the hope for our future. And so it's up to us to try and uh, raise our voices as loud as we can and not back down. Yeah, uh, that's extremely true. Mm -hmm. And um, as well as uh, I, I say speaking of a lot I when like I'm, speak. it's a great when I'm uh, continuing yeah. a thought. It's a so good thought. Speaking of yeah. being a kid <laughs> and uh, making a difference that way, what was it like growing up in the public eye? Uh, it's been interesting. I'm like, I want to talk to you about it too because now like, you're so much older and like I'm wondering how it is for you because I've known you since you were so little. Um, I, you know, for me, I think I'm, I think I'm fortunate because I never looked at it as like this feels bizarre or different from like everyone else that I know, like my kids and my childhood friends from elementary school, like my world didn't feel too different than theirs, even though it was different. Yeah. Um, I think right now it's kind of all hitting me. I'm like about right, to turn right. 20 this year and like so much has gone on in my life in like the last, uh, I'd say two years especially. Um, and I think when you wake up and you finally have the thought of like, oh man, like there are so many people who would love to see me fail. Like that, that can be yeah. overwhelming for anybody. Um, but what I've come to realize is that growing up is hard in general. Like 19 is hard. It's going to be real hard for you. I'm just yeah. giving you the heads up. Okay. Um, but it's even harder when you're kind of underneath the microscope of people. Yeah. But I think for me, if I can just be as transparent as possible and just kind of be very firm in the fact that I know I'm going to like make mistakes one day. Yeah. It's inevitable, but I'm just going to be making mistakes in front of a very large group of strangers yeah. that don't really know me. Um, but if I can just go to bed at night and know that I'm doing my best, I feel like that takes the pressure off of it a little bit. But um, it definitely, I'm very cautious of like what I do and who I'm seen with and the kind of things that I take part in or don't take part in. And uh, when it comes to that, that's like what I'm most strong about. <laughs> Now, growing up over, uh, like, because you started when you were really little, like, yeah. really little, okay. and, uh, per, like, younger than you know. yeah, yeah, very. Um, so, out of all that time, that, how many years would you say it, would, it was? Um... I would say I, I count I count seven as like when I really started, but British Terpathia was like you know four for Lonely Hearts, six for British Terpathia, but then went home for a year, didn't audition, didn't do anything, so I was like that was fun, I'm done. And then when I was seven, I came out here for press, and then like seven until now, it's been like. So oh. over all that time, what would your highlight be? Not necessarily even in in the acting business, but everything that you've you've done. That's really difficult. <laughs> That's really hard, Kyle. I'm sorry. I'm um, sorry. Can I say like a few little things? Yeah, 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 sure. Like, cause, okay, um, the first thing that would come to mind was uh, Variety honored me a couple years ago for my work for Child and Cancer. Um, and I had spent a majority of my kind of childhood years going to this specific event called Power of Youth and, um, and watching the honorees every year and just feeling so inspired by them. So I remember when the phone call came in um, that Variety wanted me on the list for that year. I just remember being uh, more grateful for that than I think I would be for any other award. Like it was just a, it was just a beautiful thing. I was able to fly in um, a beautiful girl named Brooke who I'd become friends with who was battling cancer and she was able to share the stage with me. So for me, like my heart, like that's that's like a moment that like I'll always be really grateful for and a memory with her because she sadly passed away. So like I'll always be able to hold that memory too. Um, in terms of just little things, I mean, I love being behind the camera. So producing the last two movies was um, such an amazing like learning experience for me and made me fall in love with this business even more. Um, and then uh, I think the book coming out was pretty cool too. Like I was like, oh wow, like I can walk into like Barnes and Noble and buy a book that my name's <laughs> yeah. on. So that was really neat. Um, but gosh, there's so many people that have touched my life and my heart and so many sets and experiences that I'm so grateful for that I, I know it's cliche to say like I can't pick a favorite, yeah. but it, I really truly from the bottom of my heart mean that. Like <laughs> every moment of my life, the good, the bad, the in between, like have shaped me out to be who I am. And yeah. I wouldn't change any of it. I'm so grateful. Yeah, picking favorites it's on, hard. on anything is hard. Even yeah, yeah, food. Yeah, it's difficult. Food. Yeah, it's yeah, it's pretty hard. Real hard. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, what would you say, like, uh, if you can, even mm -hmm. what what's next for you? 
What's next? Uh, right now, it's kind of one. My main my main goal is taking care of myself, which I have never done. I think in 19 years, like I think I'm fully experiencing how important it is to kind of make sure that your mind is just as healthy as your body, and uh, that you're checking in with yourself on like a daily basis and making sure that you're good. Getting like a solid group around me to kind of lean on and support and trust. Uh, so that was kind of how I entered the new year, just kind of taking care of myself. But um, music, I've started to tease now. I've always wanted to do music my whole life literally and um, I'm working on that now and figuring out ways to start sharing music soon and um, it has been the most like peaceful enjoyable process that I've ever done I love every second of it yeah and with the uh, wanting to be heard and with audio and whatnot yeah. and, and the music thing how did your uh, podcast get started my podcast got started super quickly and simply it was just over a text message <laughs> that my sister and I knew they were like hey do you want to do a podcast we were like together they were like yeah we were like heck yeah <laughs> especially because my sister has two little girls and you know mom duty is really hard and difficult and so I don't see my sister as much as I like would love to and so I think there was constantly like this void of like oh I want to hang out with you but it's so hard because we both have so much going on and then also a void of like I have gone through so much in the last couple of months my sister has been there for every single part of it and the conversations that her and I were having with the age gap aren't very similar like, are very very similar whereas if I was talking to someone my age and so we were like wouldn't it be so great to have these conversations where other people can listen to it and feel heard and maybe if they don't have a big sister or a little sister we can be that for them um, and so it's just like a really authentic way that it came about and it's been really fun that's yeah you have to come on Oh, I'll get you on. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> we, we have only had girls on the show so far, so we, we need we need some testosterone, like, testosterone in there. It's time. It's it's, it's an interesting... Uh, I, I mean, honestly, I don't know why, but it seems like every answer that I get in all these interviews is so different from what I expected. Really? Always, yeah. And, That's cool. And, like, this, the fact that it started like that is... <laughs> Honestly, I find it kind of weird in a way because mm -hmm. most things it's like, oh, we want to do this, okay, and then you got to wait and get it all ready to go and everything and yeah. then make the final decision, but the fact that you were just like, yes, let's do it, it's kind of There cool. was honestly, looking back at it, there was never like a, there was never like a, oh, we have to keep the momentum going or, oh man, well, what's the next project? It just kind of seamlessly all fell into place and I think I was just so happy to be along for the ride that it seemed... It seemed like an extra, like an, like an after school activity to me. Like it just seemed normal. Like it just seemed like my life. And I know that a lot of people can't say that. And I'm, I know that my experiences like were very, very out of the ordinary. And so I'm like continuously still so humbled for it and so appreciative of everything that happened. How did you uh, uh, get in with uh, uh, writing a book then? Like. I was producing my first film, Annabelle Hooper and the Ghost of Nantucket, and uh, Stephanie Miller is a wonderful author. She had sent me a couple of her books a few years ago, and I read them and loved them. Actually, like, slid into the DMs, and I was like, we need to talk and make this into a movie. And so we talked that night for, like, two and a half hours on the phone, and we're starting to develop that, pro like, that process. And then Annabelle Hooper, a film that I had been attached for for years, got its funding, and uh, they came to me to be like, hey, we're going to be filming these dates, but I was doing my show Good Witch, and so I was like, I don't think I can do it anymore. Somehow, the scheduling gods were in our favor. They made everything work, but um, during the time when we weren't sure, they were like, well, would you still want to like at least produce it? And I was like, of course. And so my main conversation heading into it was, I think the script needs to be updated. It was so good, but it was also written years you know, before we actually were able to make it. And so like, do you know anyone? I was like, Stephanie. So I called her up. I was like, you ever written a script before? She's like, no. I was like, great, you're hired. <laughs> and so she came to Nantucket and we did the film together and we were just sitting down going over the scenes for the next day, rewriting. And she was like, just kind of looked at me randomly. She's like, do you ever want to write a book? I was like, yeah. And she was like, okay, well, I have an idea. And I was like, cool, let's hear it. And then we just started bouncing ideas. And Losing Brave was literally born that night in like a Nantucket hotel room. Okay. Yeah. Would you, because uh, you co-wrote the book, yeah. right? Would you ever go and write a book on your own? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't like saying no to things like that because I never want to put that out there. But I, I think absolutely I would love that. Um, the book world is a very different world than the movie world. Um, and I feel like I still have so much to learn, especially if I do it on my own. That's why I was so grateful to kind of, you know, kind of 
taste out the waters of the book world, but have a mentor to do it alongside with and who would guide me and teach me and someone that I could like look up to and learn from. And I think for Stephanie, it was a different experience for her too, because I mean, we were with a very, very big publishing company and that was her first time dealing with that too. So it was nice we were both able to lean on each other, but the idea of doing it alone, of course, like I love a good challenge, so I'm always down for that. Um, but I would have to definitely feel prepared because the book, the book world's no joke. It's kind of yeah, intense. Yeah, it's it's yeah, very yeah. very. There's because uh, I mean you have to make sure your audience is in mind and everything. Yeah. And honestly, I've never been big on writing things. So yeah. see, I I'm, love writing. I'm on. I'm kind of on the other side of everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You in, can do, in, in a way, do the graphics. It would be my cover. Yeah, sure, Perfect. sure. Perfect. I'll, I'll totally Done. do it. Uh, maybe like I'll have to take a couple uh, art Drawing classes first. No, no, but it's fine. It's <laughs> I'll take it. But um, like you're all over the place in this industry. <laughs> I, I am. You're in, right. In, the, in, a, <laughs> in an industry that's so uh, like you're really putting yourself out there for mm -hmm. any part of it, even if you're uh, working a camera. That if if there's a problem with that camera, it's half on you, right? Every mm -hmm. piece of this industry is going all out and putting yourself out there. So if you weren't a part of this industry, where what, what do you think you would do? Like this industry at all? Like so, like no, no like, directing, no, no producing. like not part of uh, the film business. The film business at all. Uh, music. I would definitely be doing music. Um, I I love it. It brings me so much joy. That's why I'm trying to like tap into it now. It's just because I was like, you know what? Like I've wanted to for 19 years, and I'm just gonna keep wanting to for another 19 if <laughs> I don't do it now. Um, but I love the music world. I think I would love to be performing on stage. I think it's another form of what I love about movies. But except. Um, instead of playing characters that are written for me and that are fictional, I would get to tell my own story and my side of things, and hopefully let that resonate with audiences. And if you if you if you did tell your story through music, what kind of music do you think would best be able to tell your story? I'm figuring out my sound right now, but um, I grew up in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, which means I was always exposed to country music. I mean, top down, outside pool parties, on the beach, like every every country artist I was just kind of immediately consumed with ever since I was little. Um, and country music kind of is just naturally what I fall into with my voice, but trying to figure out if that is the right step for me right now. Um, but, oh man, yeah, I, do, I do love a good country music. <laughs> what advice would you give your 13-year-old self if you could? 13. Was I 13 when I filmed you with you? I, I think was, you, that was 12, Did I turn I 12 on set? Yeah. I turned 12 when I was on set. Do you remember that was the first day of filming? It was in the Chinese I restaurant. I do, actually. Yes. Yeah. yeah. When, Bart went, when Bart went running, running. I can't talk. I'm on day quill. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. You guys can know that. I'm so sick. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, okay. So my 13-year-old self. I'm trying to think of where I was when I was 13. I want to say 13 was like Once Upon a Time era... Um, I think just to absorb everything. I think, I think I did a good, I was talking to my friend about this yesterday. I think I did a good job at appreciating and absorbing every moment because I was constantly like with my mom or my sister or my close group of, you know, friends and mostly my family who would constantly just kind of be a, a reinforcing reminder, like to appreciate and appreciate and that this could all go away in an instant. But I think like my 19 year old self, now that I'm having to adult, <laughs> <laughs> is difficult. I think I would love to just talk to her and be like, look, there is so much that you're about to experience in the next like few years of your life and so many new people are going to come in and you're going to trust so many people and then you're going to hurt so many times and you're going to do it all over again and just kind of learn and appreciate and be as present as you can be. And I, I think I did do a good job at that. Um, but I do think there's something so special about like your early teen years. And um, yeah, I think I think I would just, I would I would hope that my 13 year old self would just be very aware of kind of what's going on. Okay. Well, thank you. That was amazing. And Are we done? Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I don't want to be done. This is so fun. Well, we're done oh. here with the camera. Oh. But like, I don't necessarily have to leave. Oh, great. Yeah. <laughs> Alrighty. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. So okay. You're my little one. I'm proud of you. I love you.